the KeyScan team members on board here. And so we're gonna go over the advantages, the partners and the channel of the, of the KeyScan Aurora access control platform. Uh, we're gonna do a little demo. Then we're gonna add a little uh, DW Spectrum um, overview and a quick little demo and then a Q&A and a wrap up at the end. Um, there is a chat function here in the Zoom as most everybody's aware at this point, but uh, by all means, you know, uh, we, you know, time permitting at the end, we do want to answer your questions or if we have to, we can always send you an email if you submit your questions through the Q&A, through the chat. So please load up the, uh, any questions that you have and we'll try to get them answered on the session or at least give you a wrap up. All right, so this morning I am uh, glad to be joined uh, by Brian Shake, Shrake, excuse me. Uh, Brian, can you hear me? Yes. Not there? Okay, thanks for joining us. Um, why don't you uh, take us through the Keyscan Aurora uh, software platform? Good morning, everybody. Yeah, I'm the Senior Sales Portfolio Manager for Keyscan. Uh, and I want to go through uh, some of the features of the Aurora software. Can you go to the next slide? So these are some of the advantages of the Keyscan Aurora platform. There's no annual licensing fees or any other annual fees. Uh, out of the box, you've got an unlimited number of readers, panels, sites, unlimited number of sites that you can have with the, uh, the Keyscan system. Uh, there's no licensing fees to adding readers, panels, sites, uh, or batch codes. Uh, we support 256 concurrent batch codes or facility codes in Aurora. Um, support for multiple concurrent card formats. Uh, there are no software upgrades from basic to standard to enterprise. There are bolt-on licenses that you can get for integrations like the digital watchdog integration. Um, our tech support is North American based and we have it uh, available in English, Spanish, and French. And we have a great reputation for reliability, far exceeding the seven to 10 year life expectancy of most access control systems. Um, every month I track our upgrades from our old uh, legacy systems. And every month we're doing systems that are 14, 15, 16 years old. Uh, so we routinely get way past the, uh, the average seven to 10 years. Um, next, Patrick. So the panels are not server dependent. We store the database in the field, which will play into uh, the last uh, detail on this slide here. Uh, out of the box, we include active mapping, photo ID, and a very simplistic uh, visitor management system. Uh, we do have some partners with some other vis visitor management systems if you need to have a system that will check databases like felony databases and whatnot. Um, we have a multi-threaded communication structure, so it speeds up communications. When you press save in Aurora, it sends out uh, the information to all the IP addresses simultaneously. Um, we are uh, people-centric instead of credential-centric, so one person can have multiple credentials. You can have 10 groups assigned to a single credential. Uh, kind of helps you with uh, mapping out your, uh, your groups, your group access levels. Uh, we have something called the present three functionality, which is if you present your card three times within five seconds to a reader, uh, it can trigger another function if it's programmed to do so. And that can be programmed by reader and by credential. So with the with presenting my card three times in five seconds to a reader, say I'm the principal of the school, I can lock down the entire school, or I can trigger a time zone, or I can trigger a relay to have something else happen. Um, so uh, we can use it as a, as a form of first person in as well. Um, and lastly, unique to our platform is we have something called disaster recovery. Because we store the database in the field, if you have a catastrophic failure of your database or your database server, then you can reinstall Aurora and call the database back from the field and you get about 98% of the data. Uh, you don't get full names. Instead of Brian Shrake, you just get BS. Um, not literally, but uh, next slide. 
These show some of our integration partners that we have. We have VMS integration, wireless lock integration. We have our own wireless locks, but we also integrate with the Elysian AD400 and the NDE. Uh, we have visitor management integration through HID Easy Lobby, Savants, and Telaris. Uh, Active Directory integration with Microsoft. Integration, uh, integrate, uh, I'm sorry, intrusion integration with uh, DMP and DSC. Uh, biometric integration with BioConnect and Suprema, and some other strategic integrations like uh, Kone and Otis for destination dispatch elevator control. Next slide, Patrick. So how Keyscan goes to market is we are in, you know, we're distribution based. So we go through low voltage alarm distribution, locksmith distribution, data telecom distributors, electrical. We do have an elite partner program that, uh, that you can still, you still buy through distribution, but uh, there are some benefits to being an elite partner. We do have very few, but we do have some direct dealer in Canada. Our model is more direct to dealer up there. And we also support buying groups like PSA and the AIM group. Next slide. This shows like 30 of our top distributors around the country here in the US. And some of these do go up into Canada as well. Uh, but we are available, Keyscan's available at all of these brands. Okay. So there's a lot of symmetry there between Digital Watchdog and Keyscan as far as where it's available. Absolutely, um, yes. So what with we're that, do I'll pass it over to you and Matthias. Thank you. All right. So Matthias, let's trust in the Zoom technology and I'm gonna stop sharing so that you can share. All right, should be, oh, hang on. There we go, should be able to see that now. Can you guys see that? I do not. Hang on just a second. Oh, there Paul we go. Can, got it. Paul can see it. Yep, we got it. Okay. <laughs> it's just taking a second. <laughs> All right. So uh, this is the uh, Keyscan Aurora software. Uh, so in here, basically, we've got uh, a number of different functions. Uh, just very quickly uh, across the bottom here is basically where we uh, manage our different uh, sections for the software. Uh, so we have our manage people section, we have our site uh, management, which is where you configure um, all of your devices within that uh, portion of the database. Uh, we have the video integration icon, uh, which allows you to then uh, pull up the specific video integration uh, that you might have there. We have the settings, which allows you to kind of administer the core functions of the Aurora software. We have a status section where you can have a, a live uh, monitoring control of the devices. Uh, map icon. Uh, so this is our active mapping. Uh, and just very quickly here, um, the video integration and the active mapping only show uh, once you kind of configure those, those portions. So out of the box, you would only normally see uh, the first uh, five icons. Uh, but once you've added active maps to the system, uh, then you will see the icon there. And the last one there is reports. Uh, so there's a, a pretty detailed report section here, uh, allowing for a number of different functions uh, for uh, people-related reports, uh, door-related reports, a couple of uh, integrated, so ePlex uh, reports as well. Uh, but our kind of core function reports is the system log, which is everything software-driven and transaction report, which is everything hardware driven. Uh, so the system log basically allows you to see uh, who's logging into the software, uh, where they're logging in from, and what they're doing in the software. And then of course everything uh, in the transaction report, that's everything that's coming back from the, uh, from, the uh, from the hardware. So that's everything from access granted and denied events, alarm trips, um, device toggles, and things like that. Um, our transactions are, are very detailed. Actually, there's over <clears throat> uh, 500, 500 different uh, transaction events that we're monitoring across all of our various uh, devices. 
Uh, even around access denied, as an example, has uh, nearly 20 variations. Uh, so we're very specific as to why someone uh, may not have access when they use their credential. So for the video integration uh, in particular, uh, we have a couple of different ways that, uh, that we can uh, utilize that. Uh, so if you have someone that's actively monitoring the system, uh, so for example, security personnel, uh, and you have the events kind of set up so that uh, if there's a, for example, a door forced open um, or some other violation for the system, uh, we can automatically pop up that, that video feed uh, from the system and then they can see that live, uh, live video feed. If, for example, the event took place when the um, system was not being monitored, uh, we have the ability to go back and view that recorded video uh, to call that uh, event back through our uh, transaction monitoring or transaction response. So from here, you can see I've got just a bunch of different uh, alarms in my system there from a little while ago. Uh, but for example, if I was to select one of these, this one isn't particularly linked with a uh, video icon or video action, I'll say. Uh, but what you can see here, I can have it uh, show the video. And if that was actually linked with the camera, then I could uh, have it pull up the recorded video feed uh, from that event. The other, one of the other functions as well is through the active map. And this is uh, probably the, the nicest function here is the, uh, through the map interface, we can interact with our devices. So similar as with our status screen, of course, this is uh, more graphical. And then you can kind of see how the system is laid out from devices. And of course, then be able to interact with those devices. So for example, with our doors, I could unlock or I could do a pulse command to that door, uh, which just momentarily unlocks it. Or I could do a timed unlock, so it's unlocked for a few minutes. Uh, but through the uh, camera action, I can have it pull up our video and see here, there we go. I can then see that live video feed uh, from that camera. Okay, sorry, so, um... Matthias, I'm sorry, I think I accidentally muted you there for a second. Oh, there you go. Can you so, hear me now? Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> so, so I just wanted to point out to the audience that the, the cameras that you're looking at. So basically with this integration, uh, you're pulling video that's being managed by a DW Spectrum system into the Aurora system. Um, so those particular cameras are actually coming from uh, the digital watchdog office in California uh, as you bring up that with that with that interactive map solution exactly yes <clears throat> so the cameras themselves are being managed by the oh. <clears throat> excuse me there we go uh, yeah so the cameras themselves are being managed by the uh, uh, digital watchdog software and uh, these ones in particular are uh, actually hosted at uh, a digital watchdog's office there. And basically, yeah, exactly that. We're able to uh, pull that video feed or whether that's the live video or the recorded video uh, from that uh, system. Uh, so we are in basically letting the, the video system, so digital watchdog in this case, uh, manage the video. And we're basically just uh, calling upon uh, their system to to show us that video. Uh, that last function there, so I'll probably cut out for a second. So the last function there is the ability to manually call uh, the video uh, feed. And so that last view, you can see here, it's showing us a couple of different cameras and that's based off of your uh, permissions within the digital watchdog uh, system there. So a little bit of uh, uh, set up to to configure the integration, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's nice and uh, nice and clean interface there. 
Is it possible you can show the setup screen from here? Yeah, so let me just close that out there. So for the uh, setup, um, as with all functions within our um, within Aurora, all of our hardware is configured within the, the hardware setup. Um, so you may have multiple sites. So you can see here I've got uh, a site selection option um, just within this one site here. You can see all the various devices that I've got uh, configured. And I can go to my digital watch dot uh, screen here. And well, actually, just very quickly, I'll go through the actions of adding a new one. Uh, so I'm not saving any changes. Yes. So I've added a new uh, video integration device. Uh, from here, I can basically provide a name for it. So I can say uh, digital watchdog server. Under the host, uh, we're typically looking for an IP address, but it could potentially be a uh, machine name, depending on the configuration there. Uh, and then the connection, the port connection. Uh, down below there is the login credentials. Um, so the username and the password uh, that the software, <clears throat> that the software itself will use to, uh, to connect into um, Digital Watchdog in this case. Um, so, that, so that's your client connection into, into DW Spectrum. So you're using yeah. your, your, your client connection in there, right? Exactly. And then on the uh, right-hand side, we have the ability to specify uh, the cameras. Uh, so on here, out of the by default, we just say 16, but you can specify the number of actual uh, uh, cameras that will be in use. <clears throat> so you can say anywhere from uh, one to uh, just over a thousand different cameras. Uh, and then once you specify your cameras, so for example, I'll just say eight and update that. Uh, once you've specified the number of cameras, then you have the ability to, to name those. And that allows you to kind of interact with them a little bit more easily uh, within the system. So for example, if I pull up the uh, map again, I can see this one is, when I hover over it there, it's labeled as parking. And if I go back over to my digital watchdog, I can see that camera five is labeled as parking. So that's how I kind of uh, know which camera that I'm looking at. Outside of that, uh, that's basically all the, the setup that's required on the, uh, the Aurora, through the Aurora interface. Yeah, so there is, there is one more step in terms of setting it up um, within DW Spectrum, which I'll cover when I get into the Spectrum demo. And I know I said I, we would do questions at the end, but I saw one come in and it's basically asking if the if the spectrum system and the key scan system need to be on the same network. So I just wanted to kind of re reiterate the point. Uh, Matthias is in, where are you located, Matthias? Toronto? Just Yeah, just outside Toronto, uh, Canada. Yeah, yeah. so the system that he's on is in, in Toronto, Canada, and he's making a connection to uh, the spectrum system and uh, in our office in Cerritos, California. Uh, to bring that those cameras up in the camera view. So know that they need to have network connectivity, um, but on the same LAN, no, they do not need to be on the same uh, local area network. Sorry, go ahead, continue. Didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> no, uh, that's perfect. Um, that was all I was kind of planning to cover, unless there's sure. uh, kind of anything else to, uh, to go over, and we can kind of come back if there's any uh, questions as well. So this gets activated with a, a video integration license? Oh, sorry, yes. Uh, so through our software registration in, in the software there, uh, we have the option to add a video license. Uh, so you can see that's registered on my uh, system here. And yes, so exactly that. You'll uh, purchase the video uh, integration license uh, through our distribution partners. And then um, they'll provide you a AUR450 license. And then that's kind of our prefix number. And then that unlocks the uh, video capability within our uh, system there. So another question that just came in, as long as we're on the Aurora interface at this point, um, can you generate a camera call up based on an alarm uh, from Aurora? Yes, absolutely. So that kind of goes back to um, um, that live monitoring uh, that I'd mentioned. So if you have someone who's actively monitoring the system, uh, and you want to get 
those live pop-ups of, uh, of the video feed. Um, we can do that through our event setup. Um, and again, so that's for specifically for if you have someone who's actively monitoring, but that's also how we link our video functions uh, with our transaction response function. So if that event took place in the past, uh, we would go to our transaction response. Uh, let's kind of go over here and do a search. And if I was to select that uh, transaction, uh, I could hit that show video if there was a, a action that was linked with a uh, specific camera. we will just kind of quickly go through the setup for that. Uh, so let's say, for example, I had a access denied. Anytime I have an access denied event, I want to have a video uh, call up. So I can choose my access denied for my service entrance door. And you can see there it's uh, chosen basically all the um, access denied variations that this um, door supports. So we have access denied, uh, card not in, in the controller, schedule violation, door violation. So those saying basically that you're not currently within your schedule to access. Um, so if you have normally access between nine and five and you're trying to go in at 6 p.m., you'll get a schedule violation. Uh, door violation, meaning you don't have access to that door. And then just number of variations there as well. So I've chosen my access denied event. Uh, from here, I can do some other functions as well. So I can have response instructions which relate back to that transaction response page. Um, so for example, for someone who's actively monitoring the system, so security personnel, you can provide them an instruction on, on what they should be doing, uh, where they should be going to, uh, and providing some contact information. And we could even link that with a, a map function as well. So I could say, yes, that's in the admin area, or it's the uh, on the site plan map. For the actions, this is where we would link it with the actual video or to call up the camera. Uh, so I would choose my video device, choose my camera. So in this case, I'll just say the parking one. Um, and I could even specify when I want that to um, be able to do a live pop-up. So I can leave it on the 24 hour function. And anytime someone is monitoring the system, they'll get that video feed. If I'm only expecting or I only want that function to, to take place during a specific scheduled period. So for example, Monday to Friday, nine to five, I can choose that schedule. And then outside of that schedule, uh, it won't automatically pop up that video feed. And then all I have to do is hit save. And then that takes uh, place in the system. Excellent. So, Quick question on the video integration license that you mentioned. That's per system, right? It's not per camera. Exactly, yeah. So the video license is uh, for the database. Uh, so if you have uh, Aurora managing multiple locations, uh, you would just register that license the one time, and that would allow um, as many connections to different um, digital watchdog servers that you uh, that you might have for those different sites, as an example. Excellent. Okay. Pretty simple and straightforward there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's one of the nice things. It's got a nice uh, intuitive interface. Absolutely. Okay, so let's switch it back here. Um, Thank you, Matthias. And so, should be able to see my screen again. Yep, we see you. Okay, okay. excellent. And what I'm gonna do from there is just do a quick little, uh, a little introduction to DW because we do have some, uh, some new names in this session. Um, so just a little familiarity with the background with the company. Uh, we're founded in 1987. Uh, we're a complete surveillance solution, so we, we operate in the um, surveillance space. We have offices um, in the Tampa, Florida office, and then we have another, our headquarters in um, Southern California. Our manufacturing facilities are in South Korea and Vietnam. Um, 
We are a uh, NDAA compliant manufacturer, meaning that all of the components that we use uh, are NDAA compliant, our manufacturing being in South Korea and Vietnam. Um, so we don't, uh, we comply with all the uh, requirements of NDAA and TAA. Um, our product, it's, our product line itself, DW Spectrum is our IP video management solution. You can see we've kind of uh, pushed the video integration uh, or video capabilities from, from back into coax days uh, through with DW Spectrum. And we've added products like the Megapix uh, IP cameras, our Blackjack uh, NVRs, as well as our Megapix cast cameras, just to kind of give you a quick background on the, the company as a whole and everything that we do in terms of that complete solution so when we look at DW Spectrum, it is part of a complete solution with the Megapix cameras, compressor encoders uh, to take your existing analog in infrastructure and bring it into, into DW Spectrum, as well as our Blackjack NVRs uh, that are scalable for a variety of sizes. So there, uh, in terms of Spectrum, there are a number of reasons to use Spectrum. We've boiled it down to six big reasons of why Spectrum and, you know, when we talk about the interface is dramatically easier to use, built for users um, and, and uh, surveillance made simple. So you can talk about that on a, on a PowerPoint slide with a number of icons, or we can try to uh, jump into it and demonstrate it. So for those of you that are unfamiliar with DW Spectrum, we'll kind of just do a quick little um, in, into one of our demo systems here. And you can see, I'll just bring a couple of cameras over here. So we'll bring these two cameras. And so what we give the user is the ability to lay out their, their camera views any which way they like. They can simply just drag a camera over into the display. Um, you can resize and reposition that camera and the software will just continue to work with the user as it's resizing. Uh, if I go ahead and swap them out, uh, there's three main areas of our software. There's the tab bar across the top, the site tree down the left, and then the pan temporal timeline down across the bottom that shows all the recorded video uh, within this particular system. So as I go back and do a search through video, uh, it's as simple as either using the calendar function, or actually I can just use my mouse and roll over a section within the timeline. So all I'm doing is taking the wheel ball on my mouse and rolling it in and going to the 1130 mark and all cameras that are on display uh, have video recorded. If, if they're set up to be motion-based recording and there's no motion, uh, they'll just say no data until it gets to that point in the timeline where there was motion in front of that particular camera. I can of course use the, um, calendar function to go to a specific date. So if I want to go to the third, go back to Monday, if I want to go to the 3 p.m., I can select 3 p.m. and then I can use uh, hit 310 and we're back at the 310 mark that fast. If I bring a new camera into the display, it also is synchronized at that same time and date. So by default, everything is synchronized um, in that playback mode to go back to live. I just hit the live icon here. I can, of course, just put one camera into playback by unsyncing. So I uncheck the sync button there, and then I've highlighted this particular camera, and then I'm gonna use this, uh, the calendar to go back to 1 p.m. and select the 120 mark and put this camera into playback while the others remain in live. And I can mouse over each one of those cameras and see that they're in live while this one's in playback. If I want to sync those everything on the screen back up to that playback time, I hit the sync and everything is back into that that uh, live mode or playback mode. Excuse me. If I go back to live here. Probably the most uh, efficient method in terms of record uh, searching through video is the uh, the smart search capability. So we've got a motion based smart search window that pops up here in the right panel. You can leave that open or you can minimize that, uh, but you can use this uh, just click and drag method here and highlight. And then as we do that, there's indications in the timeline and in the red indication of every time there was motion in the area that I just drew. So we can index about a year's worth of video in about a second. Uh, and you'll see it comes back. And so any kind of uh, change in there pops it in there. While I'm here, I'm gonna pop into the camera settings for a second and show you this is the motion grid where we can set up different levels of pixelization change uh, to trigger those record events 
uh, and that motion detection. So we've got those motion grids here. While we're here in the camera settings, a couple other things as far as how we're recording. Uh, we can record continuously, we can record in motion. And the third option here is that we can record a low resolution stream continuously and then uh, kick it into full high resolution. Spectrum supports anywhere from, uh, uh, you know, uh, standard definition up to, you know, the high resolution. I mean, it'll support our 48 megapixel panoramic camera. So there's really no limit in terms of the resolution capabilities within Spectrum. And of course, within this schedule, you can re, um, have different recordings going on during different hour parts. Um, what I wanted to show you and how this ties in in terms of the key scan integration is on the expert tab. And it's, it specifically involves the logical IDs. So as Matthias said, you can, you can bring in cameras. You just simply put a number in their interface and it'll go to that spectrum system and retrieve the cameras. The cameras that it is retrieving are the ones that are identified with a logical ID. So you can have spectrum generate a logical ID or you can assign. And so uh, for uh, those that have been in the CCTV industry, you'll remember in DVR days, we had you know camera inputs on DVRs one through 16, and we had multiplexers back in the day. So today, right now, you know, a, in Spectrum, uh, a camera ID looks kind of like a MAC address with the IP address. Um, but to make it work with the, uh, with the key skin integration, we kind of, uh, so we put in this logical ID to where you could go and assign an old, old fashioned uh, camera number to this particular camera. And once you apply that number to that camera, that's what's actually being pulled into, uh, into the key scan integration is that is cameras assigned with a logical ID. So this, the one step you need to do in Spectrum, as, as Matthias and I were talking, uh, is this assigning of a logical ID to the cameras that you want to bring into, into the interface. Okay. Really quick, uh, in terms of uh, Spectrum capabilities, you know, once you found the video, the beauty of Spectrum is, is its capability of, of, once I found the video with that smart search or uh, the time and date search, the calendar search, is that I can very quickly and very easily export the video. I can export that video off either in a multi-video format as shown here, or I can do a single camera display. Um, I can export it off as an MP4, an M MKV, an AVI. Uh, you'll notice that this particular client is in a, on a Mac. So we have a Mac client as well as a Linux and a Windows client. The recording engines are Windows and Linux uh, capable. And so there's no executable on the Mac client, but on the Windows or Linux client, you would get an executable for uh, as an option when you download through here. Uh, and then I can also export all the cameras that are on display, I can have up to 64 cameras displayed within the interface. Uh, finally, we'll just uh, switch over. So we'll go to a different system here. So I'm gonna jump over into this new system and just to kind of bring up, because these have become so popular and actually Matthias showed it in, in, in his, his interface, but we have what we call de-warping capability for fisheye cameras. It's one of the ways that we handle panoramic cameras and you can turn this into a 90, a 180 or a 360. Uh, you can display these next to each other. You can also use what we call our regions of interest feature. So I can go in and draw boxes around areas within the scene and that'll create almost virtualized cameras uh, within the interface. And we can drag those around and, and put those in and we can save those as layouts as simply as saying save layout and go ahead and give it a name. Uh, one other, go back. That's our uh, fish ID warping capability built into the client. You can also do that through the, the, uh, the mobile app as well. Once you have layouts saved, you can uh, open your layouts right from that tab bar that I talked about at the top there. Uh, and you'll see, well, this is the, our Tampa office. And then what I'll do is just switch over to the system that Matthias was actually logged into, which is our Cerritos office. So this was the um, parking lot that he was looking at. 
and you know we can do things like our like our panoramic cameras. We can also do things with our um, uh, PTZ cameras so that I can control them from here as well, uh, right through the interface. Okay. And then not we do have other uh, webinars online and we've got lots of training sessions uh, for things like our, our video analytic capability, but we can bring in video analytics within the system and, um, and show that as well. So again, uh, all searchable within the interface uh, right within PW Spectrum. We just wanted to give you a little, a little taste of DW Spectrum uh, well, for those that had, hadn't seen it, uh, and then we'll go back here. So that's what we talk about in terms of the ease of use capabilities within DW Spectrum. It is an open architecture platform, as I mentioned, works on Windows, Linux, uh, as well as Mac. Uh, very lightweight, the client itself. I mean, the system can be downloaded and installed within minutes. Um, we work with all major manufacturers' cameras. Uh, it's not a proprietary solution, so we handle uh, any, any OnVIF compliant camera. Uh, we do have a cloud component to our software, which allows for re remote access without uh, the need to do any kind of firewall penetration. Uh, and you also get user management. So cloud has become a big part of the DW Spectrum uh, ecosystem that uh, you can come in through our uh, cloud portal. So the same systems that you saw within the thick client here uh, are available here as well. And I can go into this, uh, this particular system uh, right through the cloud portal. And with my, uh, um, with my administrative access, I can get in and do all the settings and setup that you saw uh, in the client. I can do that right through here, right through the, uh, the web portal itself. And I can also get into a uh, health monitoring of the system through the information tab as well as the ability to view the cameras through the, through the browser. Okay, a little bit about what DW Cloud is. Uh, enterprise features are standard to so the system itself. There's a number of things, whether it's uh, Active Directory integration, um, uh, multi-server, centralized management, health monitoring, failover uh, are all built into it, uh, into DW Spectrum natively. Uh, talked about cloud a little bit, but uh, simplifies the connection, um, you know, synchronizes all your devices. So all of your mobile apps, your iPads, your, your uh, desktop PCs, your laptop PCs are all synchronized. And what I mean by that is basically that all the systems that you have that are associated with your email address are on all of your devices constantly and available without having to manage each individual device. And then you know, best of all, it's a simple licensing model. There's no tiers to it. There's, uh, you know, license, there's no license per server. Uh, there's no annual maintenance cost or no annual um, additional licenses needed for failover. It's a one-time license purchase that turns on the recording capability. Um, it's easily transferable uh, and, you know, you can upgrade the system, the click of a button as we come out with new upgrades. So um, we just, just released version 4.2. So somebody who bought version 1.5 seven years ago is able to upgrade their system and run version uh, 4.2 today with no additional cost. And as I mentioned, the system is scalable uh, from a single uh, camera type system with our CAS product all the way up to our blackjack servers. And they can all be merged together um, as I, uh, some of the systems that we were logged into there, like this particular demo system, you'll see uh, this is uh, one server in Tampa, as well as two servers in California, all merged together uh, in a multi-system. It doesn't matter uh, the size, the operating system on each one of these servers. Uh, this, this independent system can have up to 100 servers with uh, over 10,000 cameras uh, being managed within, the, within that spectrum interface. Okay, so we do have a complete line of what we call the Blackjack NVRs, uh, varying sizes and storage sizes depending on the, uh, uh, the application. Okay, that was the, uh, the quick run through of, of uh, DW Spectrum, um, and by all means, we can always uh, schedule 
we're available for calls and uh, demonstrations. Uh, we've got lots of people out there in the field that can come out and talk to you and uh, walk you through the DW spectrum uh, and and also the, how, how it interfaces with Keyscan. Uh, okay. So at this point, what I wanted to do was to uh, the QA. I see a number of questions are, are queued up there. Um, Paul, did you happen to read any of those or? Uh, any yeah, I mean, we've got a few here. Any, let's see. Uh, so we've got uh, Jeff Horvath uh, ask, would a camera with a field of view tripwire, so some sort of video analytics, uh, can it be tied to Aurora and then bring the camera to full window or pop up? So in the initial, so I would say in the initial integration with Keyscan, what we've concentrated on is working with the viewer. Um, uh, however, we, we have had some conversations with them since we've gotten that viewer approved. I would say, you know, Jeff, what I would point out, one of the things we, um, we didn't show fully inside of Spectrum is the rules engine. Specifically, you asked about analytics. So I bring up the rules engine and our uh, analytic events inside of each camera. And so things like uh, tripwire or line crossing or intrusion detection, all of those coming from the camera can be brought into DW Spectrum. And then we can do a number of things within the Spectrum interface. If you wanted to pop up the screen or you wanted to do push notification, you can do that inside of Spectrum. We can communicate with third-party devices. I think uh, uh, we had some, some conversations with the Keyscan folks about how we would communicate. Uh, and so we're, we'll look at the, you know, deepening the integration. But one of the ways that we can communicate with third-party devices is using this, what we call uh, HTTP request, where we can send information to uh, third-party uh, products, like, like the Keyscan product in this case, and uh, send that information so that on that analytic event, um, we, we send a notification event through there. So, uh, I don't know, uh, Matthias or... Uh, Brian, if you have anything to add on that. You guys out there? <laughs> you might have muted their mic. Oh, sorry, I had my, uh, my mic on mute there. Um, yeah, so basic, I think that kind of covered it off there. Um, yeah, because right now, as, as you said, we're more focused on the, uh, just getting that viewer uh, capability. But um, as we uh, uh, kind of look to expand that, integration between the between systems and we can look to see uh, do more functions there. Okay. Because there's a similar question about sending a, a push alarm to the mobile app and that would be the same thing is they would have to send us through our uh, uh, generic event to us to push a uh, to push video to our, our mobile app there unless they have a mobile app. Okay. Yeah. So Right, yes, yeah, so Aurora doesn't have a mobile app. We have our kind of uh, uh, web browser interface, which is mobile friendly. Uh, but the one we, what we also can do is uh, send email notifications. Um, so we could send uh, an email notification of the event taking place. Uh, but because the video is being managed from from Digital Watchdog, uh, you'd have to have kind of two events in a, in a sense setup. Right. So one for Roar to send the email to say, hey, this is what the event uh, took place. And then in Digital Watchdog, you kind of set up a, um, include the video file in a sense from uh, from Digital Watchdog. Okay. Because if, if they can push us a, some sort of generic mm -hmm. event through there, we can send out a mobile notification and, and they can retrieve the video in our app. So it sounds like it'll yeah. work. Yeah, that, that might be possible as well, because we could send a, uh, a UDP event uh, from the Aurora software. Uh, so potentially, if, if uh, that could be configured. There we go. So uh, a, a user named Marcus, it sounds like he's ready to purchase, uh, wants to know the part number for the video integration license. Uh, was not yes. able to find it uh, in, I guess, in this, I guess, the ADI. Yeah. yeah. So the part number would be uh, EAUR. So E is an echo, AUR, kind of short for Aurora, and then dash CCTV. Ah, okay. So Marcus, if you got that, uh, if not, uh, by all means, email us and we'll, we'll send it to you. Yeah. So 
So Paul, I see a question in there about bandwidth and, and it looks like he's asking about video bandwidth. So I just wanted to kind of um, demonstrate uh, in terms of bandwidth and how spectrum, because the integration itself, um, there's no real impact in terms of the bandwidth. Uh, essentially Keyscan is acting as a client, just as this thick client is, is acting as a client to the, to the server out there in California in this case, or, or in this case, I've got a, Tampa camera, um, but when we when we talk about bandwidth and you know, uh, I can't give you a, a magic answer because it really depends on the number of cameras, the resolution of the camera uh, that you have open at the time. If you have sixty four cameras and they're all two megapixel, um, versus if you have sixty four cameras and they're all five megapixel. I will say, however, that and bring up the information icon just to kind of uh, demonstrate this, but you'll notice when I bring up that information icon in the lower uh, left corner, there is a, um, a window that shows that this is currently streaming in the high res format for this uh, four megapixel imager in this case. And so it's about four megabits per second and 30 frames per second. Same with the second camera over here, also um, about five megapixel bits per second but if the user is looking at it in a small form factor and by small form factor i mean something like like this it will switch over there it goes so it's scaled down to the low resolution format so the, the bandwidth will depend on the number of cameras the resolution of cameras but it also spectrum will manage that remote connection so this low this switch to low resolution in this case uh, let's make it a little bit smaller so it switches. So it's dynamically switching into that low res mode. This has nothing to do with recording. It's just, it's how it's managing the client connection for optimization of bandwidth being used. Uh, so hopefully, uh, as far as uh, spectrum, yes, all the video is, uh, is watermarked um, for uh, purposes when you're doing the uh, the export, uh, there's actually a watermark utility in there. Uh, we've also added some additional um, capabilities within Spectrum uh, in the system to where um, there are uh, things that you can do to um, yeah. So display watermark with username over videos in the in the case of uh, you know somebody who uh, a situation where you don't want video, you know, necessarily being recorded via a mobile device or something like that. Um, and being displayed, you can actually display the watermark uh, with the username of who's logged into the system uh, as well within there. Okay. Um, the presentation is being recorded, it will be posted on our website. Uh, it will be uh, in a number of places, both in the video, our knowledge base, as well as um, uh, on our uh, technology partner page so that uh, you can refer to it later at any point. Um, how does Keyscan maintain DW user rights per user? Uh, so I think I understand what they're asking with that one. Um, okay. So I, I believe what they're asking is how does um, like uh, multiple Aurora users um, or Keyscan users um, manage into the digital watchdog. Uh, so basically, Aurora, uh, the the Aurora software would use a single um, user permission to to connect to the digital watchdog, um, and then based off of uh, permission permissions within Aurora, uh, you could say whether or not they have the ability to uh, to view the cameras or uh, configure functions around those, uh, but it's more, uh, do you have access to, to see uh, the cameras within that uh, site within Aurora um, or not, basically? Yeah, and I will add that by the username and password, so you can control, we have, Spectrum has a couple of different user types. In the, in the case of the Aurora system, you would use a local user type and you can assign a user role to that particular type. So the user role function would allow you to control what cameras are being seen as well, uh, as well as uh, what functions inside a spectrum. So spectrum can control that. Um, so that in the user role section here, the permissions would give you whether you could see live or playback, um, whether uh, what cameras you can see and you can assign either cameras or layouts to, to those user roles. 
Uh, but again, what's going to pull into the Aurora interface are cameras that are assigned with that logical ID function in the camera settings. Mm -hmm. um, so I see a question, are there any DW installation files that have to be installed on the Aurora workstation to make the integration work? And if so, where do we get them? So Matthias, that's the DW viewer. Yeah, so that's the DW uh, viewer files. Yeah, so you're gonna find that in our knowledge base. And so uh, I see Chris is on here and I know he's working on that particular document, but from our website itself, uh, if you just hit to the support tab, uh, currently right now, it's gonna drop you right into the knowledge base. And as soon as Chris is done formulating the article, we're gonna, Put it in here so you'll you should be able to just type in key scan and you'll have a document that'll have a link to that particular file um i think and i'll confirm this but another place that you that you can look is, is in our uh, download file i think we're going to also place it um, in a section that we have that we call plugins on the product download page so Every page, every uh, product that DW offers has its own product page. Um, so let me get to that. Okay. So here we see the downloads, and here you'll see um, a plugin file. So we'll we'll also populate it here as well, so that you'll have it available here. So every product page, in this case DW Spectrum. Um, there's tabs here which have the features, the part numbers, and system requirement, you know, all related products. There's a lot of information on each product page. Um, but one of the thing, one of the tabs there is software. And this is where you can go and you can download the uh, the software itself. It's one of several places that you can go, but um, you'll see that the this is where you can get the Linux client as well as the Windows client, as well as the Mac client from here as well. Okay, uh, I will say also when you're in the DW cloud, uh, if you're adding users uh, to the system and you use the uh, and you use the cloud connection, they will get an email and that email will bring them here to where they can download as well. But this is just going to be the client or the mobile app devices. Um, the uh, Keyscan plugin itself is going to be uh, loaded both here as well as in our knowledge base here. As soon as that's finished. Okay, uh, with open capabilities, can DW integrate with other camera systems that could be existing on site uh, to bring it into Keyscan? So the, the question, and I'm assuming you're, uh, uh, so, uh, other camera systems, well, let's just talk about other cameras, if they're IP cameras, so you have a compatibility list here. Um, in terms of you can install Spectrum on a Windows or a Linux device, or you can purchase a Blackjack from us. Uh, we have over 600 different manufacturers with over 10,000 different uh, types of cameras. Uh, and when you click into one of those, you can get all the information about that. So if it's a, an existing IP camera system, I would say just install a Spectrum-based uh, server uh, at the site. Spectrum will actually go out and auto load. It'll go out on the local area network and find all the compatible cameras and auto load them in, into the site tree automatically. Uh, if it is an existing analog system, I would uh, point you towards our... Uh, encoders. And so these are um, both the, uh, we have the, uh, the ENHD16, excuse me. So this takes high definition over coax cameras, encodes them into an IP signal, and then we can bring them into the spectrum interface and operate them just as if they were an IP camera within, within spectrum. So that's and how we can handle both analog. analog and IP. Yeah. Yeah. Standard analog. Yeah, standard yeah. analog cameras as well as high definition analog cameras in the system. I think that's most all the questions. We'll review the, the list here and um, uh, email you back if we did if we missed it as we uh, play back. Uh, just uh, coming up on the hour here. Um, but any more questions, please. Type them into the chat, and we'll get them back to you in the in the um, in the form of an email response. Uh, we appreciate everybody's time.
uh, and your participation. Lots of questions today, so that was good to see. Um, and um, oh, finally, one more, one more slide. After is the contact information, so that you have my contact information as well as Brian's. Um, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or send us an email, um, and we'd be happy to coordinate with you. Uh, oh, I did see one other, uh, Brian, I don't know if you wanted to talk about the, the Canada, which are distribution based up there. I was actually <laughs> just going to mention that saying like, hey, you guys are ADI and, you know, big distributors yeah. in Canada. What was that, Patrick? That I don't know had... if you, yeah, so. Um, Marcella. Marcello. Yeah, Mar yeah Marcello, he is, yeah, he's one of our senior, our sons up there. Um, yeah, ADI is available in uh, in Canada and a couple of those other uh, distributors, but uh, uh, so I think Graybar is up there and I believe Annexter is too. So is that what he wanted to know? Distribution. Yeah, yeah, he just wanted to, he just wanted to emphasize that he's very distribution centric up there. Um, yeah. Really. <laughs> so, sorry. Um, okay. Again, appreciate everybody's time. Thank you for, uh, thanks for attending and please reach out to us if you have any questions. All right. Okay, All right. great, thanks. Thank have you. Good day.